welcome back to the homestead if this is your first video with us my name is Jesse I am the mama my family and I homestead here on one acre in an old house and uh, we do a little bit of everything to sustain ourselves including raising chickens and having a garden and some other things and we do a lot of stuff homemade including canning see my little cabinet over there I'm going to do a disclaimer before I start today's video. Today's video is going to be short and sweet. However, I have some extra milk. Our family is blessed that we have access to fresh milk from a couple different families that live in our county. And I need to can some milk because it didn't get all used up from last week and I sure don't want to put it to waste. And you could give it to your animals, but I'm going to can it because it's excellent for baking and cooking and gravies and stuff like that. And then that saves on your fresh milk and it's great like in the winter time and even back during the thing when it was hard to find milk, having canned milk on the shelf was a blessing. Now, this is not approved by the powers of be. You do what is best for your family. For our family, this works. If you do not feel this is right for your family, you do not need to feel the need to leave a comment about it. You do what's best for you all. We bless you anyway. You're not going to hurt our feelings, but you don't have to do this. For us, it works, and we share our story and share with others what we do that works for our family. Okay? Love you anyway, but please don't leave angry messages. I don't need that. Nobody needs that. Be kind. Okay? So, normally I can my milk in my All-American canner. I'm going to turn this down a little bit because I don't want my milk to get too warm. And recently I started using my electric canner, my Nesco canner, okay? It's a very simple process. I do have another video on the All-American canner. On that video I give instructions for venting for five minutes, for those of you that know what that means. Um, that's what we did, that's how I was taught, that's how it works for me. I had so many people comment to vent for ten minutes. I went ahead and pinned a post and say, hey, you know, a lot of home canners say they can or they vent for 10 minutes. So, it's up to you what you want to do if you're using a canner that is not electric. I don't even really know if I needed to put all that in there. But anywho, there it is. So, for the electric canner, I'm going to put you through the process real quick. It's easy peasy. I'm really enjoying having, I have two of them, of these electric canners. And I haven't hardly gotten my All-American out. I know I will when the heavy canning season comes in. But for right now, small batches, cleaning out the freezer, cleaning out cabinets, leftover stuff like that, this Nesco canner is awesome sauce. So, all right, let's get started. Okay, so I've slowly, and I mean slowly, been warming up this milk. I've only got it on a two. I had it on a three in the beginning. I do not actually want this hot. I don't want to cook it or scald it. I'm only warming it up that way when I put it in the canner. You know, normally if I leave it sit out for long, like you can leave it sit out and get up to room temperature and it'll work just fine. But I didn't have time to let it sit around and wait to get to room temperature. So I went ahead and I put it in the pan. I did the same thing last time and just warmed it up. My hand's in there. I mean, it's just like lukewarm, a little better than tepid. It's nothing super warm or crazy, okay? So I'm going to shut it off. I have my jar. I'm going to do pints today. Clean sterilized make sure everything's washed um, lids and rings are ready I'm assuming if you're watching this video you already know how to keep everything clean and neat and sterile okay so I'm gonna bring my jar up as close as I can now this is fresh milk but I did take most of the cream out of it there's a little in there because I don't have a strainer I strain by hand not a big deal but this is a whole fresh milk. This process will pasteurize it. It's not going to have the same benefits that raw milk typically has in the fridge. But it can be used later. It's shelf stable and it's still going to be higher quality than store-bought milk. Having said that, I have no problem with store-bought milk. I have a bunch can. We buy store-bought milk every week still, even with this. Okay.
Alrighty, so I got my pint jars filled up and I'm going to take a clean rag, no vinegar or anything of any kind because milk and vinegar don't mix. There's a whole science lesson there, but look at that. I've already checked these for chips, but this is another way to check while you're wiping them off. Wipe off all your edges. I already have my canner just plugged in, but that's it. Make sure everything's nice and clean. And we're going to put our lids and rings on. Might have helped if you could have seen all that. But anyway, got them filled, got them wiped off, lids and rings. Setting them in here. You do have your canning rack in your canner. It's pretty. I'll show you a jar from the last batch I did. Just so pretty. Alright. Bands are finger tight. Don't crank it down. Make them nice and snug. Eight cups of good warm water. Like I said, no vinegar used during this time. I tend to only use vinegar for greasy things anyway, but some people use it every batch. It's up to you. All right, make sure your gasket's clean. Already done that. We're going to close her down. Now, I have it on, make sure it's on exhaust to begin with, and I have it on the 10 pounds per pressure weight. You do whatever's best for your elevation, whether it is 10 or 15, okay? We're going to hit high. We're going to hit one minute. One minute. We're going to hit start, okay? This should begin counting down. It should count down 10 minutes. If you're familiar with your Nesco canner, you know all this already. It'll hit the one minute. It'll count that one minute off, but when it's done venting and it hits the one minute, I go ahead and close this, even if it's just a minute. I go ahead and close it. It kicks off on its own, and then we leave it be. Let's let her go. That's how it looks when it starts. Okay, she just beeped. We're on E10. Now we'll count down from 10 all the way to 0. When it beeps, that's when we'll close the vent up at the top. Alright, she's on 0. I just closed my little vent up here where it's airtight. Once she gets to the pressure she needs, she'll hit one minute, count down, and be done. There she is, the one minute mark. Here's my steam. Okay. Now the minute's over. It's going to lose pressure on its own. We are not going to do anything. We are going to leave it alone for one hour. Alrighty, our hour is up. I always use a towel just in case a little steam escapes. It kind of protects me. I'm doing this at a different angle, so eh, here, let's do this way. Oh, looks good. We'll give it a minute. Just let everything kind of, don't want anything crazy happening, and we'll pull them out. One of them's already uh, sealed on me. I already pinged. I love the sound of the ping. All right, let's see how they look. Remove them nice and slow. Looks good, looks good. Sorry, left-handed. Gotta do it this way. My water looks pretty good. Pretty clear. What you want to see. So there wasn't a lot of siphoning or anything. Now. Once you have them all out and everybody's happy, I'm going to cover them with a towel. Just a little something I do. And they're going to sit. Take a little towel. Cover them up. Chirping. That wasn't for me. 
Let them sit overnight if possible, at least a good 12 hours, 12, 16, 24, you know, at least just as long as you can, depending on your space. I understand the way it is here. A lot of times I'll can in the evening and I'll move it the next morning because I don't have that kind of time to let things sit for a full 24 hours. It's okay. Once they're done and they're settled and they're cooled off and everything's good, remove those rings, rinse or wash your jars, label them and put them on your shelf and you're good to go. I have one here. This is actually dated for my dad's birthday because this was the date that I got this milk. But here's a jar, no band or ring. And here it is. Hmm? And it's pretty, man, it's pretty. Pretty good, right? I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, not hard at all. If you decide this is right for your family, you don't have to have an electric canner. You can use a regular pressure canner of any kind. It's not a big deal at all. Go check out my video. There's a lot of other videos also. If you want to vent for 10 minutes on your video, on your um, regular pressure canner, go ahead. This one I vent for 10 minutes because that's the only option that it has. And this one has worked for me just fine. But when I vent for 10 minutes in my All-American, I end up making cheese. So I do five minutes. But you do what is best for your family. Um, I'm thinking I got everything covered. If you have any questions, comment down below. I'll try to help you out the best that I can. Thanks for joining us today. Do what you can right where you are. Psalm 34, verse 8. You taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that peace with the name. Bye, guys.